Well, at this point, we've fracked our well. You can see here, as we talked about the last time, we um, had several stages. And so hopefully we've stimulated a lot of the natural fractures in the reservoir. We've also produced a series of very long hydraulic fractures that uh, extend uh, up through the reservoir uh, in and out of the, uh, in and out of the uh, screen and uh, <clears throat> all the way along the length of the lateral that you just drilled. So what we want to talk about now are the stress relationships that are important to consider when you're completing your well. So <clears throat> you're going to drill a horizontal well. Uh, you're going to have perforation clus clusters. You're going to have several stages along the length of your well. The idea is that you want to uh, orient your well and design your uh, perforations and stimulation in such a way to maximize the stimulation of the reservoir volume in the vicinity of your well. And in order to do that, you want to drill your well perpendicular to the direction of SH max or along the direction of SH min because what you're doing here at the perforation cluster is you're injecting fluids into the reservoir. This is a plan view. So we're looking vertically downward onto a map view here <coughs> of the uh, horizontal well. And so you'll be injecting fluid into the formation. And if you want to open up fractures, the easiest way to open fractures would be to produce, uh, press against the minimum horizontal stress. So the, the easiest way to open up a fracture is going to be to press in this direction, the direction of the minimum compressive principle stress. So. We've got our well oriented so that it's normal to SH max, and the hydraulic fracture that we open is perpendicular to SH min. Uh, it's the easiest direction for that fracture to open up in. That's the direction that it's likely to open up in, even if you don't drill your well perpendicular to SH max. The hydraulic or the hydraulic fractures are still going to open up in this direction of SH min. So. We will have also hoped to have uh, fractured a lot of the natural fractures in the reservoir in the vicinity of this perforation cluster. So we're going to have a lot of stimulation in the region adjacent to this hydraulic fracture here. So the hydraulic fracture is a tensile fracture. It's generally quiet. It's, asym it's aseismic for the most part. You don't hear it. And the fractures that we do hear are those that are uh, created by shear failure along the natural fractures in the reservoir. So in this diagram here, we're defining some terms. We're defining the angle beta that you see in the Moore circle plot. Uh, this beta over here is the angle uh, that SH max makes with the normal to the fracture that you're looking at. So we've got two fractures here, fracture one and two. So we have two angle betas. And those are the angles again. The, these, the, these are the angles that SH max make with the normal to each of these fractures. So these fractures at present are stable, but they're with this low angle of SH max, they're probably or they could be critically stressed. And they could be easily brought to failure. So if we look at their present uh, condition, we've got the minimum. Uh, effective stress, we've got the maximum effective stress. And uh, these two fractures on the Moore circle are stable. They aren't close to, uh, close to failure. Uh, we have a couple additional terms here. We've got the slope. This is the coefficient of friction, not of the internal friction of the rock, but of the friction between the natural fracture surfaces that we want to rupture. And then we also have the intercept, which is the cohesive strength of uh, these fractures we're trying to rupture. This is an equation for the failure envelope, which is just the shear stress would be equal to S0, the cohesive strength, plus the coefficient of friction times the normal stress, uh, sigma sub n, so, uh, which, which varies along the, it's, it's our uh, independent variable. 
So, uh, with that, the idea is that we need to increase the pore pressure. If we increase the pore pressure, we can slide this failure, we can slide the Mohr circle over uh, so that these fractures uh, uh, drift over and above the failure envelope. So here we have, uh, again, this situation. S0 is relatively small, the one that we just looked at. We're going to uh, increase the pore pressure, and as we do that, we'll see that these two fractures are now, they've drifted across the failure envelope, and um, we have failure along these two fractures, which, which is what we want to do. We want these fractures to fail. We want them to open up. We want to put propant in there so that we have a fracture porosity that we can produce from. So a little bit redundant here, but um, again, let's kind of think about the stress orientations. This is the orientation of SH max. This is a map view. We're looking down on the fractures here in the reservoir. This is the direction of SH min. And uh, this is the direction that we're going to be drilling our well. So think about uh, which fractures. We've got two sets of fractures here, and they're plotted on the Mohr circle. This is our failure envelope. Which of these two sets of fractures is likely to open up? So SH max is oriented in this direction. These fractures that are at a relatively low angle to SH max, they aren't failing as we speak. They're stable. Uh, however, if we change the stress condition there, maybe we can open these fractures. So we drill our well. We drill it perpendicular to SH max. We go through the hydraulic fracture stimulation of the reservoir stage by stage by stage. So we're pushing fluids into the reservoir. We're decreasing the effective stress so that the Mohr circle moves to the left and we produce failure on these fractures, which were optimally oriented uh, with respect to the orientation of SH max for failure to occur. So the hydraulic fractures and the natural fractures, again, we draw this distinction. The hydraulic fracture is one that's produced, uh, uh, the kind of the main fracture that's produced by hydraulic fracture stimulation. It is, you might think of it as generally being a uh, uh, kind of rectangular in shape, uh, maybe with a, a smaller vertical extent, uh, hopefully smaller vertical extent than uh, lateral extent. This half width over here could be five, six, seven hundred. Uh, feet, uh, a couple hundred uh, meters or so, and it opens up in the direction of SH min. Again, it's, it's relatively quiet. Here we have the orientation of SH max, and you can see that I've highlighted the, these fractures with, as red and these fractures in blue. Uh, SH max is pressing against these blue fractures. It's kind of holding them closed. Even if we reduce the effective stress in the vicinity of the hydraulic fracture, these fractures are probably not going to move. Nothing is going to happen to them. But these fractures are because they're already oriented at a fairly low angle to SH max. Shear failure may occur if we reduce the effective stress here. So if we go through the stimulation process, uh, we see rupture along these natural fractures. Um, we uh, hear these events. These are relatively small magnitude events. And uh, these are the events that we hear again. The hydraulic fracture deforms. It's a tensile, tensile failure. We tend not to hear the ripping noise as the fault as the fracture tip propagates through the formation. What we do here is the slippage on either side of these natural fractures, which are relatively small. They might be about the size of your desktop to the size of your office floor, depending on the size of your office floor. So uh, these would be the microseismic events that you hear mostly during a hydraulic fracture stimulation. Okay, so here, here are some examples. Uh, we usually frack from the toe to the heel. And, um, you know, depending on the stress conditions, the local structure, uh, some areas, and, and, and also the placement of your observation well, 
uh, can affect the density of microseismic events that you hear. SHMAX in this case is oriented in this direction. You can see that we are able to identify trends or failure trends in the microseismic activity which has been induced in the reservoir. And uh, you can see that it, it uh, generally tends to be at a small angle to SH max as we uh, as we expected. So total heel fracking, and you'll often see the uh, events created during individual uh, stimulate uh, stages of hydraulic fracture stimulation go out along the direction of the uh, uh, dominant uh, natural fracture systems in the area. And here is just another example from another. Well, we looked at uh, earlier on, we have SH Max now is oriented uh, kind of parallel to these fractures. And so you might be scratching your head as to what's going on. Uh, we normally would expect these fractures maybe to be at a higher angle. But what's happening here is that we have, in the reservoir, we have two dominant fracture sets. One is north 60 east, one is north 83 east. So the north 60 east set facilitates the development of the hydraulic fracture in this area. And the North 83 East set is branching off of that North 60 East set. And it is interpreted at least to be largely responsible for the microseismic activity that we see in these individual uh, stages. So uh, the next, in the, in the next uh, few few slides, the next presentation, we're going to talk about uh, magnitudes and develop some um, uh, perspectives for the magnitudes of events that are produced as a result of hydraulic fracture stimulation and whether they, you, you might be wondering whether there's something that you should be uh, worried about, whether they're uh, sizable enough for you to feel maybe as you're uh, sitting at home and you're, uh, and you're uh, relaxing in your, in your lounge chair, watching TV or whatever it is that you do. So we'll talk about that next time. Thanks for joining us.